All right, guys, Hatchwick are back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. A remarkable day yesterday at Champions. North America is on top right now. Two teams already qualified through to the playoffs. Zero teams from EMEA presently qualified, although that can certainly change today. But the bracket has now been confirmed. The randomization has gone through, and all the North American teams may end up on the same side of the bracket. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Plenty to discuss today. Firstly, big news again from the Sentinel side. Must be said they're kind of forming the Avengers over there, picking up big name talent from not just players, not just content creators, but also in the actual structure of the organization. Lena, formerly from TSM, lots of drama around her. I'm sure some of you guys are aware, but still a big name in those in these kind of situations is going to join in a financial management role. So is this something like Sentinel's looking to go into the kind of League of Legends size? I suppose we shall see but again they're bolstering their self on that perspective just to absolutely guarantee I suppose they get into partnership for franchising next year this also from Chet of course that well the coach of the optic team day six still positive so tough scenes for Chet of course but um, yeah still by the time playoffs comes around the optic are now there he should be good to go I think Sean Gare said it took him to day seven to get out of the situation that he was in and apparently that's going to be the case for Chet as well with any luck at the very least so that of course is good news and that's the thing really yesterday we talked about the food Food poisoning stuff and the positive tests and whatever like it seems to have calmed down to some extent or not being as serious as like um, it was maybe initially thought it was these issues could still recur as the tournament progresses here and some were saying it was about like the hotel food or whatever that was really causing these issues but um yeah I suppose we'll see on that one but thankfully the games yesterday as intended did go ahead the players might not have been absolutely back to 100% but at least they were still able to play on the stage and actually get the results of their well some of the teams were looking for this other was pretty funny Zombs was getting roasted for this but I think like his tweet was pretty funny really these are the Zerxia boys came on here and of course one of them comes out with the suitcase and Dobbs is like yeah these guys are going straight to the airport after the match like he wasn't really just joking about the fact that these guys were going to lose the match he was more saying about this guy brought a suitcase to the stage and uh, he's going to be straight to the airport after this as in fairness they did lose this series but it was a very close one between Xerxia and um, of course the boys on crew like um, this is interesting because I predicted FPX and crew to be the two teams that made it out of this group but yet again I'm going to go one for two at best I did have high expectations expectations of North America this event. I did say like a few videos ago that even outside of Optic, I do feel like these kind of North American teams are getting to some extent underrated, but I did feel like Exit would not be the strongest team from that group, of course, as I don't really think anyone did, but we'll dive into that here in a second. But Crew also in this group, they knock out Xerxia, sets up a really spicy elimination game in that group most certainly. Then it was Fury versus Fnatic, another European team on the struggle bus lately. Some absolutely disgusting shots here. Like the Fury guys really put up a great fight this series. Like they played really really well, but um, yeah, unfortunately it just wasn't quite to be for them in the end. Then a tough first series, of course, they played as well up against DRX, and um, I mean, yeah, Fury of Fnatic. Crazy series. Game 1, though, goes Fury's way on the icebox. Then it was Fnatic that bounced back, and it goes all the way to a haven in the end, and uh, yeah, it was tied up, I think, at the half time, and in the end it was Fnatic that just about came out on top to win this series, but yeah, respect to Fury, they played a great tournament on the whole. We're unlucky, I think, to lose both the series that they did, and that's the thing, really, with the way this tournament played out, is that some of these groups are just stacked, right? Fury Fury, DRX, like Fnatic and 100 Thieves, like that's a crazy group and they went out of the tournament but they certainly, well, put up a good representation for their region. Now this was the kind of massive series of the day to me that I was mind blown when I was actually watching this live. This was Exit of course versus none other than FPX, the reigning champions from Masters 2. BCJ was making some crazy plays. This guy, it's just great to see if you guys seen his story the last couple of days, right, and the, the issues that he's, uh, you know, had to suffer with and still suffering with and began to play at this level, like, um, you know, it was absolutely phenomenal phenomenal to see. So, great job from Exet, right? Game 1, I was like, okay, wow, this is interesting. Exet are really just coming to play here on Pearl, and um, it's cool to see Pearl actually get used. Again, the map isn't great, but I think it's actually quite fun to watch at times. Bit of a mess over at the B site, but look, I suppose it is what it is. A lot of teams going for it now and actually deciding to play at this tourney, and when a result like this happens Game 1, where Exet take the win, it's like, well, you know, maybe they just understand the map better than FPX. FPX don't really have that much good stuff prepared for it, so understandable. And then, of course, FPX bounce back to win game two. Pretty dominating fashion here on the Fracture. Exet struggled pretty heavily on their defensive side and it was Ardis who, you know, was making some serious plays here on the pistol round to end up taking this round as well. And then, then it was like, okay, yeah, well, so FBX are back in business. There's no way that uh, Exet are going to win this map. And then, of course, the rest of the series was another question entirely. But yeah, kind of crazy uh, round here from Ardis to make all five kills happen with the Classic. And uh, But then it goes to a final game on the Breeze. And this was honestly kind of mind-blowing to me, right? Because, of course, we do know that the offensive side of 
Breeze can be difficult. But a team like FPX with all their, like, um, their attacking rounds were so, were so good right at Masters 2 Copenhagen. They were really impressive in the kind of all of their situations where they would come into their offensive rounds, they would take their time, feel out different situations, know exactly what site to go for. But Exit were just always there. Like, um, and even if FPX did get control of the site and get the spike down, like, there was always the clutches to be had. And, like, the guys on, um, on Exit were playing, like, so well, but also the FPX guys were shooting straight well. We saw the shots from Sagetsu, like, Xiao had his clutch moments, but, yeah, this 1v3 from Zekin, that might have been the deciding factor, because 8-1, like, um, the game is still kind of on. If it goes 8-2, you could end up at a 9-3 half, and then anything can happen, but to go to 9-1 and then end up at 11-1 at the half, like, um, that was going to be GG, effectively. So, remarkable to see FPX, the reigning champions, taking down 11-1 and a half by Exet on, on the side of Breeze, especially bouncing back from game two. Like, I thought that was incredible from these guys. And, and then in the end, like, FPX were trying their best. Like, it was eventually 12-4. They started a bit of a comeback, right? And that was all the talk. I think it was even 12-1, actually, at one point. And then people were like, okay, wow, could the comeback potentially happen here? 12-1 to 12-12. We saw earlier this tourney a 12-4 comeback happen. And, uh, you know, of course, I actually worked out in favor of DRX in that game up against Fury, I believe. But, uh, yeah, in this one, it wasn't to be in the end. 13-5 to for Exet, a dominating performance, really, on the final map of this series. To take down the reigning champions, FPX, and qualify for the playoffs. So, great performance from Exet. Like, I did say that I thought the NA teams were potentially ones to watch this tournament, but I thought that Exet were not going to be, I thought that it was going to be 100 Thieves and Optic, the two NA teams that made it out. It could still be three. We'll see that in a second here. Like, that is still on the car today based on the bracket as it is presently playing out. But yeah, remarkable performance here from Exet. And what does this mean for North American Valorant in general? Because it's the European guys that are most certainly struggling. BTJ says, you know, 2 1. See you guys in playoffs. Great performance from him. But of course, for the entire roster, you've got to give credit where it is due to the entire team. And this is the thing is FPS is we love this for us. The North American scene is absolutely loving this right now. Seem like the NA teams are really like an optic look like one of the strongest teams coming out of their group. Now Exit have made it through like beating the reigning champions in pretty dominating fashion as certainly in the maps that they won in the series. Pearl and Breeze like uh, this is big for North American Valorant right even Zelsa says NA is the best region so can they cement that by 100 Thieves qualifying as well. They'll need to win another match against Fnatic that's going to be far from easy. We'll see how that will play out here in a second. Now even as uh, Weltis says from Sentils, their analyst right now there's a possibility that zero EMEA make it. This is crazy to think about right? No EMEA teams have yet qualified through the kind of the first teams that qualified. Two of them have been North American teams. Of course Leviathan from South America and DRX from Korea right? No EMEA teams have yet made it. Is this just a bad tournament for EMEA or is it just too early to say because like look as the tournament progresses these guys Fnatic FPX. These guys can still make it through. I kind of expect them to, but I, you know, then again, I did predict 100 Thieves to make it out of that Group D, so we'll see if that happens here in a second. Now, whatever happens out of these groups, because of course we've got four Cs confirmed, and four Cs yet to be confirmed, this is the way the bracket will happen. So, the playoffs have been drawn randomly, which I think is always a bit of a surprise they do them randomly, because I thought what they might do here is do like an A versus B, or whatever the case is. But effectively, the number one seed will play the number two seed from a randomly selected group. DRX will play Group C's second seed, Leviathan will play Group B second seed and we'll see what these are in a second. So Optic will play either Paper X or Liquid here in the quarterfinals. Exit will play either 100 Thieves or Fnatic, right? So pretty interesting to think about the way this has worked out, that all three NA teams uh, could be on the same side of the bracket. If this is Exit 100 Thieves, Optic versus, let's say, Liquid or something, or Paper X is probably more likely, then um, it's kind of a crazy side of the bracket. Now DRX will play the second seed from Group C. That's going to be either FPX or Crew and then Leviathan play either Loud or Zeta Division. So they arguably have one of the best quarterfinal matchups there. So, I mean, yeah, that's the way the bracket is playing out as it presently is. But interesting to see how this works out, right? Like, should it be randomized? The thing is, when they kind of randomize it, right, people are going to say, wow, is it actually random or whatever? Like, uh, those are the questions that go down. But, um, I mean, yes, this is the way things are working out. So today, today's September the 6th. These are games, a lot of them are happening tomorrow on the 7th. So there's basically a day off now, right, of rest for these guys and recovery to, to a certain extent before these decider games happen. So Leviathan, Optic, X and DRX. Those are the teams that made it through. And of course, there's still other teams remaining. But yeah, Paper X Liquid, that's an absolute banger series. Difficult one to call. I think Paper X should be favourites. Maybe in Leviathan are just the absolute god squad, which maybe they still are. And that's the thing. But Amir is struggling this tournament. But, um, you know, it's possible that no Amir teams even make it through to the brackets. And maybe it's going to be the South American guys that really turn up this tournament. And well, really the Americas in general. Loud Zeta as well. And then, of course, on the 8th, we get FPX Crew and 100 Thieves Fanatic. These are the most exciting couple of series for me. But definitely intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. What do you think of the performance from Exit and the guys? Like, yeah, what do you think also about the bracket as it is being formed? Just to kind of recap that if you guys are, well, kind of, if you missed it at the time.
time just to say it at least one more time for you guys to get familiar. D or X will play either FPX or Crew. Whoever wins that game on September the 8th, the Leviathan will play either Loud or Zeta. Optic will play either Paper X or Liquids. And then Exit will play either 100 Thieves or Fanatic. So that is going to do it for today. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us the YouTube God. This is a good video. And I was like, you should see it as well and help grow the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Most FBX fighting the first. The opening is theirs. But Sagetsu needs to hold on. Hiding behind. But now he's revealed his location. They're jumping out, damn it! They've given him all the chances that he needed. A few uh, kills and they could be right back into this. The advantage now. There is the plant coming through. The drone. It's going to catch him. They revealed him. They're going to kill him any moment now. What? 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 He's hit one. Done damage to Xiao. He's on 10 HP. He got revealed. This man has no right to be Gigi. alive. And now, this could be it. The final straw for FBS. GG. 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 I don't think anyone out there predicted this result for XF putting them in the upper echelons of the tournament scene down to the question. But they have topped their group. And in the end, Tom, it's the team with more battalion players that takes it. <laughs> GG! Throughout the entirety of this map, this is now a team that have gone from okay. We Congrats to Exit, man. Last time we went straight into playoffs. I'm just happy that uh, they, they bounced go back away. from their last they performance. Here, oh! No. We still have that. We still have that chance of all. <laughs> we still have that chance of all NA and no EU then. If 100 teams win.